Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. That says Alex, that's me, the Ramble, that's the show, and we're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, our old friend Stephen Kravitz is with us last time. Uh, we had to end it early because, well, <laughs> your uh, your internet went down, right? Yeah, uh, well, I'm not a techno uh, genius or anything, you know, but something went wrong. Yeah, and it, you know it's not your fault. We always blame ourselves first, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 But it's not. It's not. It's not uh, uh, the case. In most cases, it's them, not us. However, if you them. if you call them, they'll make it feel like it is you. Of course they will. Yeah, it's not us. It's you. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Have you tried right. turning your computer on and off? Yes. You know, I mean, come on. Anyway, how you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Fine. L last time I was asking you about your life. Now, this week I also asked uh, uh, Pearl about his life, and after a while I began to think maybe I shouldn't have asked. Really? Oh, yeah. He had a whole thing where he uh, hated his sister, and he wrote her a letter telling her a couple of reasons. Oh, there goes my phone. Why she should uh, why she should uh, kill herself, and uh, then she killed herself. No. <laughs> yes. Did you know that about Pearl? No, I didn't. See, that's strange. So we were talking about you though. But we you were saying you had a, a really happy childhood for the most part. Yes. None of the things that like for instance in later life you had a drug problem. All right. Yes. So yes. what do you think caused that? in your past because obviously you had a happy childhood and you would think you know a drug problem comes from a miserable childhood usually but you know addiction doesn't know any any difference between uh happy and and sad yeah i just had that uh when i broke my jaw in 1973 yeah. and they gave me morphine oh god okay and that and i was off and running yeah and, and and what was it about it? You liked the morphine or you couldn't get off of it? I liked the morphine. Yeah. What did you like about it? I just felt comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. I was happy to see everybody. I was in a good mood. Yeah. You know, nothing, I had no aches and pains. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Because now, well, I, 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 I had broken my jaw in five places. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was wondering that they gave me the morphine, and then I did get addicted. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, but but uh, so it, you got addicted to the morphine because they gave you the morphine because of the jaw, but right. then they took you off the morphine, and you had withdrawal right. symptoms, right? Right. Right, right, right. And so you started seeking out the drug to prevent these uh, these uh, 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 withdrawal yeah. symptoms. Yes, but now that's in high school. When I got to college and I got serious, I stopped doing all all, all of the opiates. I only smoked pot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still did drugs. I smoked pot the whole time. Yeah, that was it. It wasn't until I got back to Los Angeles in like '85. That it, I, I reintroduced myself to the narcotics. Now how did that happen? I sought it out. I sought it out. I wasn't. I was done with cocaine, and I wanted to go with the next step. Oh boy! Yeah. Okay. And so, what was that next step? For me, it was heroin. Wow. That's serious. That's big time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And and uh, uh, here's here's the interesting thing about heroin. You don't immediately get addicted to it. No. You get you could get emotionally addicted to it from the very beginning. But right. to get physically addicted takes about they say 6 weeks of abuse. Yes. Uh, unless unless you have a history. Yeah. And I had that history going back to high school. Okay. So it was like I had never stopped doing drugs. I, I you know, I stopped for like yeah. seven years. And then when I restarted, it was like I had never stopped. My habit was was huge right away. Why did you restart? What was it that? I mean, obviously, you went to the trouble of quitting. Right. Only to six years, eight, seven years, or something like that. Years later, to start up again. Why all? I mean, why did you give up? You knew how difficult it was probably to quit in the first place. Right. So it's like the reason why I once I quit smoking, once I quit cigarettes, I never went back because I don't want to have to go back and do it all over again. Sure. You know. Well, you went back knowing you would have to do it over again if you wanted to quit. Alex, I, I can't tell you why, but I sought it out and I wanted it. And I also wanted to do IV drugs. And yet, in all of this, you had a happy childhood. So we can we can yes. throw that aside as being a causative part right. of your life. Right. I, I had no major um, issues as a child. I mean, gr growing up, I mean, we played, like I said, kick the can. We were outside all the time. There was a lot of kids. There yeah. was the baby boom. There was a lot of kids my age or a couple years older, yeah. or a couple years yeah. young. We had, always had enough kids to play like stickball, or, or 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 baseball or football. So we were just active all the time, just having fun, playing hockey, going skiing. Well, aside we just, from the sports, you and I pretty much had the same kind of upbringing. I had a very good family. My parents were right. wonderful to me, and uh, uh, I adored my father, just adored him. See, and my dad was absent. Your dad was absent? Okay. No, he was there, but he would just, he would leave before we woke up. He would mm -hmm. come home, we would have dinner, and then pretty much he would go to bed. Really? Okay. Right. So he was absent. Your, how about your mother? She was hands-on? Hands on the best. Yeah. So you know, because I I remember my childhood, uh, my father being I love my father ter terrifically. I love my mother as well. She was fine, but uh, I had issues with her. I mean, there there right. were they, they, but they weren't issues of. Uh, um, it was more an issue of that I didn't like her as much as my dad. Okay, you know. Okay. And then when my dad died first. I was left with my mother. I just found out my dad died. What? My dad died on March 20th, and I didn't find out until April 8th. Really? Really. And you're in that area? Where, where was he living? He was in Virginia Beach. He was in Virginia Beach, oh, okay. And, and nobody thought to get a hold of you and tell you? In fact, we're not even mentioned in the obituaries. What? Me and my brothers are not mentioned in the obituary. So what do they say about him in the obituary? Well, they, they, his present wife, and his daughter, and his grandson. Oh, wow. But as far as my mother, my mother and me and my brothers never existed. Wow. But that, that may be a function, though, of the current wife. Yeah, well, yeah, because, I mean, you know, I don't think it's his doing. He's dead, you know. And then somebody had to write the obituary, and right. and uh, that was left up to the present family, and they just don't want to even realize or talk about the former family. Right, right. Yeah. They don't want anything to do with us. And you could hate them for it, but then again, you probably don't even know them, right? Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. right. And I don't, I don't hate them. I don't yeah. hate them. yeah. But but you had a you had a, a pretty normal childhood. Oh, that, very that's, normal. That's what's amazing because you think of a kid who who be, uh, somebody who winds up on heroin of having been end up coming from a bad family and having issues. Well, I, I, you and, know, I, I lost my mother very young. 
Uh, I remember that. You were very... Um, uh, I was a teenager. That was something that I noticed that every time I talked to you about one thing or another, the mother, the death of the mother always came up. Right. You know, right. that you were working, I think, on getting her a tombstone. Right. We, uh, in fact, when I came in, um, uh, when I was a finalist in the competition, mm -hmm. uh, I took that money, and me and my brothers, both the three of us, bought a headstone from my mother's grave. You know, I still haven't put a headstone on my mother's grave. Well, I'll tell you why I did it. I went back yeah. one, one year, one, I was there in there in the winter, mm -hmm. and she just had a plaque. And I went to where her grave should, you know, should have been, and I couldn't find it because there was snow on the ground. So I kind of like flipped out, lost my mind a little bit, yeah. and that's when I decided that, you know, we needed a headstone. That's when the guilt hit you. Yes. I, I have yet to put a headstone on my mother's grave, and I really probably should do it because I'm going to go in a while, and uh, uh, sh there'll just be this empty thing there, although they may have some kind of notification there. Uh, I've never been back, all right? Right. Uh, what I wanted to do, ideally, was because they're buried next to each other, is just put one tombstone down for both my mother and my father. That's, that's, that's what my grandparents did. Yeah, I, I often joke about the fact that I know what I want on the tombstone, and it will read, Here lies Alexander Schwarzman and Ruth Schwarzman, parents of, and then in big letters, Alex Bennett. <laughs> well, if I'm going to pay for it, I may as well get some publicity for it, right? There you go. You know? There you go. But, you know, I've talked to a lot of... Uh, I've talked to a lot of uh, people who said, oh, I never did get around to putting a headstone on my parents' grave. You know, it, it, that's kind of an unnecessary expense to leave behind for your progeny. Right, right, you, right, right, you, right. Because right. uh, it's kind of like razor blades. The grave will cost you a thousand, but the tombstone will be two thousand. Right, yeah. right, right, <laughs> right, 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 exactly. So I, uh, uh, I, I just. Uh, but anyway, it just seems like, you know, you had a, your childhood wasn't that bad. So all of a sudden, uh, you know, I mean, you've had, you had a drug problem for years and I, right. and I could never figure, you know, the other part I couldn't figure out why is I could understand a bad comic having a drug problem, <laughs> but a good comic, you know, he I should be know. happy that he has his craft and he, um, he respects his craft and he wants to be at the top of his game. And you had to know that when you were doing drugs, you weren't at the top of your game. Right. Maybe you well, thought you were, but you know. Well, what about Mitch Hedberg? Yeah. I mean, he he OD'd. He died. Just let it ring. What? I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, tell us about Mitch Hedberg. Hedberg. I'm not that aware of him. I don't. I don't know much about him either. I just know that he was. At the top of his game, and he was uh, in and out of treatment centers, and he ended up ODing. Wow. Wow. You know? Yeah. You you wonder why. You know, I mean, uh, you look at a guy like Lenny Bruce. I mean, right. I don't think we know anybody more talented than that, do we? No. You know? And you would think that his talent would have made him uh, want to respect that talent, and to not do anything that would obliterate the ability to do that. Talent. Yeah, but when you're in it, Alex, you're in it, you know, full blown. I mean, it's yeah. like I said, it's, it's completely addicting. I mean, you wake up sick every day. You wake up going through withdrawals. Your whole goal for that day is to get well, is to find something to use. Yeah, but doesn't it take up a lot of your time? Takes up most of your time, and 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 also it doesn't supply you with much material because you're not going to go on stage and say, "Hey, folks, you know I'm an addict." Well, the funny thing about being an addict is right, 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 right. You know. Although I do end my set sometimes with, "I got to go because the methadone clinic closes in 20 minutes." <laughs> Let me ask you this: you, you did movies, you know, you did the Clint Eastwood film, uh, Sudden Impact. And right. you've done a couple of other films, too. Quite, quite a right. few, actually. If you go look up Stephen Kravitz, it's not a small IMDb. It's, you got quite a few credits there. 
Right, and, well, and I did a TV series. What series was that? It was called Black Scorpion. Oh, really? It was on Sci-Fi in 1999. Oh, I, I remember you talking about that. Right. Yeah, and so you did a series. Were you using at that point? Yes. So, in other words, how did you balance doing, say, a TV show or a movie and keeping from feeling sick? Methadone. Methadone. Now, I hear methadone's terrible. Methadone is harder to get off of than heroin. Yes. Methadone gets into your bones and heroin gets into your muscles. Yeah. When you're coming off of methadone, it feels like there's bugs crawling inside your bones. Oh, jeez. So what what made you decide? What At what point? I mean, you've been clean for 15 years now, you said. Yeah, it'll be 16 in July. What made you decide to go clean and to go through that process, especially with methadone, which is much more difficult to, to quit than heroin? Right. Her heroin's about a three-day detox. But I understand methadone is like three months. Methadone's rough. Yeah. yeah. Methadone's rough. Yeah. What made me decide is I just, you know, I, I had been trying to get clean, Alex, mm -hmm. since 1986. No, 1987. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get clean permanently until 2005. So I spent like 20 years battling trying to get clean and then stay clean. I could get clean, I couldn't stay clean. Mm -hmm. And. This time around, I didn't go to a treatment center. I didn't do anything like that. I just went to Narcotics Anonymous meetings. I got I, I kicked cold turkey, and I just it was something I wanted to do. Let me, for the first let me, yeah. time, Alex, I the obsession was lifted. I didn't have the obsession to to want to use. In other words, it wasn't my every thought while I was clean was I would really like to be high right now. Okay, let me ask you this. There is a certain thing that happens with some addicts. Or with uh, I've been told most addicts that at a certain age, it's what they call maturing out. That for some okay. re reason, people just one day wake up and go, I don't need it anymore. Right, right, right. Was that and, you? Um, um, yeah, and, and also I'm fortunate enough to not have the craving. I don't jones for it anymore. You know what I mean? But is that because you matured out? I believe so. I, I mean, I've never heard that term, but it makes sense. You know, and and why this time it clicked and the other, you know, 20 because times I, it didn't. I knew a guy, uh, now to begin with, when I knew you in San Francisco, were you doing heroin right. at that point? No. Okay, because I didn't ever have an indication that you were that bad no. into drugs. No, um, I, didn't, I didn't get back into opiates until I got to Los Angeles. Okay, all right, okay, uh, because uh, but the, so far as maturing out, the the uh, one really bad addict that I knew was Mac Rebinac, Doctor John, uh -huh. uh, and he was just you know he was he was a major heroin addict, supposedly, right. and this is what I'm told, he matured out. One day he just woke up and said, I don't want it anymore. And that was it for him and heroin. Strange, huh? Yeah, well. Yeah. Well, because that's that's the thing I was talking about, about the maturing out. That These are things about heroin that are never reported, you know. Right, right, yeah, right. They, they, what's not reported, and I think it would be important for people to say, is that it takes six weeks of, of addiction to get hooked. Because people go, oh, I just took my first shot. I guess I'm hooked now. Right, right. And then they just the keep doing it till they really are hooked. Right. There was a book, a whole book I read once on the myth of heroin. And that the myth was more dangerous than the reality. Oh, yeah. You know. The Surgeon General. I don't remember, the, I don't remember her name, but the, the Surgeon General at, at that one time this african-american surgeon general woman, mm -hmm. uh, female and she came out and she said i'd rather have people do heroin than do crack because when they do heroin when they get their fix they're cool for the day they don't bother you they leave you alone they take a nap right. over in the corner right. jocelyn and elders jocelyn jocelyn elders was her name 
Yeah, and, yeah. and she said with crack, they do a couple of hits and then they go rob their grandmother. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So she said, I'd rather see people on heroin than on crack. Well, that, that was a very decent uh, assessment of heroin. Right. You know, right. but it was this myth surrounding heroin. I mean, the worst thing that ever happened to, for people to get off heroin was the movie uh, Man with a Golden Arm. Oh. That whole withdrawal scene. Sinatra. You go, oh, well, if that's what it's going to be like, then I'm just not going to withdraw. Right. And not every right. withdrawal is that way. No. No, no, no. You know. So mine my, my, my was, was, was rough, but obviously it wasn't intolerable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then look at Jerry Garcia. He died trying detoxing. Oh, did he really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Detoxing from what? Uh, heroin? Heroin. Really? I didn't know that you could die from detoxing. I well, I'm sure there was complications. You know, he was overweight. He was probably diabetic, amongst other things. And he was in a treatment center when he passed away. Wow. that I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So heroin did kill him. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Gee. I guess so. The you only don't thing see a lot of... You don't see a lot of heroin addicts my age. I mean, yeah, using heroin addicts. Well, I'll tell you, age. the closest person to me that ever used heroin was one of my ex-wives. I No, folks, it isn't Ronnie Bennett, who's now gone. No, it was somebody else, okay? And she was a heroin addict. Really? Yeah, yeah. And, and I learned through that experience what a pathetic drug it is. It, it's yes. not that it's it's a terrible drug, it's that it makes the person using it so pathetic. Yes. You know, I, oh, I'm feeling sick, I gotta get something, you know? Right, I'm, right, it, right. It's right. always, they're always begging in a way, you know? And well, they're always, you know, as soon as they fix, they're concerned about where they're gonna get the next shot from. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't wanna be sick. Well, it's a, it's a life of just single purposeness. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. So where, a, where in a, that where in that did you find time for comedy? You'd be surprised. <laughs> I mean, it, it would just seem to be very difficult for me to do a radio show every day, and also right. have a heroin addict ha habit. Right. Uh, I, the reason I've never had a major drug habit is I didn't want anything that would impinge on my abilities. Right. The only thing I ever did to any great extent during a period of time was coke. Right, right, okay. right. We all did during that period. Of time. And the difference between me and a lot of other people was I could afford it. Right. Okay. So it, it's like it, uh, Robin Williams had a saying once that. Uh, yeah, Coke is God's way of telling you you're making too much money. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know. yeah. Uh, it, 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 but I, the only reason I never quit is I was afraid to quit because I was afraid that uh, uh, I would have to go through all kinds of withdrawal symptoms and everything. And finally, I moved to Miami. And when I moved to Miami, I didn't have anybody to buy it from, so I quit. I quit. I remember I quit at the uh, Florida border. Uh, really? That's, I had, took, had some coke with me. And that was the last snort I took, and that was it. And I suddenly realized it was very easy. There's no, there's no really withdrawal from coke. It's all psychological. It's all psychological. Yeah. Because it's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy. You don't go through the withdrawals that, say, a heroin addict does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you get a good night's sleep. You get a couple of good meals in you, and you're pretty much good to go physically. Y yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I then I did my shows, and I was fine. I was, didn't go crazy. I didn't go nuts. You know, the right. thing that drove me crazy and nuts was living in Florida with those motherfuckers. But, you know, right, 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 um, right. God, God knows at my age, I'm a Jew. I live in New York. I'm supposed to move to Florida. It's the law, and there's no way I'm ever going there again. Right, right, right. Most, you hated it. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. I really have enjoyed it. I hope you don't mind me asking you about all of no. this. Because I find it very interesting, you know. No. As some, I'm an, Alex, I, I have nothing to hide. I'm an open book. Yeah, so am I. 
What is it about know? what is it about us that you know if I ran for political office they'd go well you know you did this and you did coke then and blah 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 and I went yeah everybody knows that right right <laughs> you know? right yeah, you, right, you right, can't yeah, get any you can't get anything on me it's already out there right 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 I have nothing to hide <laughs> I have nothing to hide hey listen let's do this again next week I love uh, talking with you I could talk for a whole show with you you know right. Uh, right. And I, uh, it, it, you really are you're smart and you're sharp, and I like you a lot. Thank you, Stephen Kravitz. Thanks, folks. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, oh boy, that was interesting, wasn't it, huh? You know, I think that was an interesting, interesting conversation. I got really uh, involved in it emotionally and every other way. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy, and it's good to see him feeling so healthy and happy, you know? Uh, he's one of those kind of people you want to see be healthy and uh, happy. Uh, let me see here. I just got to, let me see here. Is that the, is it, I, got, I just got to bring this up a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay. See, problem is I don't want my head to go up there. So anyway, we're okay. We're all right. Okay. All right. I think it's time for us to uh, go over and uh, admit some of our people here uh, to go on the uh, Zoom. And uh, here they come. Oh, yes. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, Scott Boddicker lookalike, Scott, <laughs> the other Scott. Uh, we got... Um, Let's see here. Oh, let me go up here and do that and uh, bring in uh, uh, Jeff Stein. Uh, there he is. Hello, Jeff. How are you this evening? Huh? Oh, well, now he's... How are you? Oh, there we go. Oh. Bravo. You're getting better at this every day, aren't you? I'm trying. Yeah. And uh, hello to Alan. And uh, we're... Uh, oh. Who else is anybody else calling yet? No, nobody. Oh, there's Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Um, Charlie Wallace, uh, and he's uh, he's connecting his audio. So we'll wait for. Hopefully, he will. You, you need to connect your. Oh, there we go. Okay, you're fine. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? Sorry about last night. Uh, last night was. What happened? Your computer crap out on oh, you? Oh, jeez. I, I I've been having this problem with the uh, USB. Port and it was. It seemed to be working fine. I seem to have solved the problem by uh, by uh, resetting it. And uh, then all of a sudden, last night, it always happens just before I'm going to go on the air. Right? It doesn't happen at three o'clock in the afternoon. It happens just before I'm about to go on the air. And just before I went on the air, uh, it it crapped out on me. So I had to reboot the machine, remove all the USB ports, then put them back in. Then these lights I have are are uh, run through the Wi-Fi, and somehow the Wi-Fi went bad on me, so I couldn't have the lights, okay, uh, working right. And then, uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah, then that also, I have uh, all my lights here on uh, my, uh, my uh, Alexa, okay? And they were all out because somehow something happened to my Wi-Fi. So after I got off the air, I think I was working for a good hour and a half getting everything back working again. So tonight, I decided I would start up the, uh, the, um, my switcher here uh, about a half hour before the show started just to make sure it was working and, um, and let it just keep, uh, keep working until I had to go on the air. So that if I did have a problem, maybe I could solve it by the time we were ready to go on the air. The stupid part about me is, is that last night I didn't do something I should have done. And that was, I should have uh, gone over to my other machine and simply run it through there onto Facebook or whatever, like we do for the Monday show. But I didn't stop mm -hmm. to think about that. I do have an alternative if we need to do it, but... Uh, you know, I wish I could have said I took the night off, but I didn't take the night off. I was busy trying to solve this problem. One more time, and that's it for me. I give up. I just, you know. Yeah. But anyway, thank you I'm all, buy, though. Thank I have to buy some new cameras. No, it has nothing to do with the cameras. These are the best cameras you can buy. 
What do you mean it's time to buy a new camera? It has nothing to do with the cameras. It has I, it has to do I think with I don't know something that's not talking to something else. So yeah, last of all, you got too much stuff working off the Wi-Fi. No, 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 system. no, no. The Wi-Fi had nothing to do with it, really. The Wi-Fi was another problem that happened as a result of that one happening. So, uh, you know, it has to do something with the USB system here. And uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure it out. I've got two powered uh, hubs uh, that should do just fine. But, uh, you know, you once know. in a while. I mean, this thing was going for maybe two weeks without a single problem. And then all of a sudden, boom, just, just before I'm ready to go on the air. Okay. So yeah, if you're splitting, uh, like a hub off of one USB port, what you're, you're sharing the bandwidth between that one port that the hub is, is plugged into. Well, no, there are several hubs I have. Okay. Yeah. But if you have competing devices and I have the two cameras separated to two different hubs that are on two okay. different inputs into the computer. So Oh, no, yeah. that isn't it. That isn't it. Um, but, you know, what the hell? You know, I mean, I wish I could use one camera for both the Zoom and the, um, and the um, uh, switcher. But unfortunately, I can't because sometimes it won't, the, the uh, Zoom won't recognize it if it's being used by another device. So, anyway. I like, hmm? I like the side notes. Robert Natali, it looks like he's about ready to whack somebody. Really? What? Oh, had, oh. What is that? Robert Natali had, looks like he's ready to whack somebody. But you what? had your head sideways, and I'm envious that you have all this gray hair, and I'm going bald. And uh, maybe that's what they picked up on. I thought I've never seen that. Well, side. you don't have to feel envious of him. You can feel better about yourself when you look at me. <laughs> Moon well, the nice that. thing about that, Alex, is you get to comb your hair with a wash rag. Oh, very funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's... This side tech stuff is so stupid. Robert is gangsta. Is what? Uh, our, our, our little boy, Matt, crashed. Gangsta. Gangster. Oh, okay. These are all, all these people in the room, in the chat room that's on the side of the... Uh, uh, and I was thinking of stopping the chat room, and then I went, eh, you know, I never look at it anyway. So, you know, <laughs> let them have their fun. And Charlie uses it a little bit, and uh, uh, sometimes Scott Boddicker uses it. And, uh, yeah, Charlie says, I miss Ronnie. Yeah, so do I. I was thinking about that yesterday, how I miss her. But, mm. hey, you know, we're all going to miss everybody eventually. So. You're not mm -hmm. the only one that's red. I can't seem to get the red balance straightened out on my camera. What do you mean? On, you look fine. Only on, well, not to me. I don't. Maybe it's maybe it's no. my monitor dying no. or something. I just have okay. a I just have a red face. I also have see. I also have my lights turned towards orange. See, so I I, I could look whiter, but uh, any whiter, and I'd have to join the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> um, so anyway. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I guess everybody's still watching the trial, right? Well, it's on. It's over. We're all It's over now. It's on Monday. Well, yeah. It's parked. <laughs> uh, I guess, I guess the guy's going to get convicted. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, uh, there wasn't much of a defense, you know, um, I think they could have held, they could have done a better defense than they did, but uh, they just were kind of like it's almost like they gave up, you know. Everything had gotten thrown against them except the kitchen sink, and you know they just I think they're just hoping that somehow they can get him to not get a huge sentence out of this whole thing. But years from now, we'll remember this as the tailpipe defense. They the tried tail. to pull the CO card, and yeah. I just went. Yeah. I almost fell over when they did that. I know. I know that gas, and that didn't. That wasn't going to fly. No, that wasn't going to fly. But listen, I mean, come on. You're you're the lawyer for this guy, and and I, God bless his lawyers. They are people who are defending someone who really isn't terribly popular. Okay. And uh, they have to launch the best defense possible because that's their job, you know? 
And uh, they, so they pulled out anything they figured they could pull out, but there isn't much they can pull out, is there? I mean, I mean, how would you, let me put it this way, if you were going to defend him, what would you do? What, what would you I would pull do? Out? What, what? Is I would <coughs> get some other uh, cops from other cities who would able to somehow say, I've done the same thing several times. And at the end, I was, I thought the guy would survive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold well, on. Yeah. you know, they, I look, he was back from Hawaii. <laughs> are you, you know, get, do I look red? Yeah. Are you, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Hawaii. Yeah. So, so your, your, your point, Jeffrey, is that those other cops say they've done this, and then if it's against their department policy, now they're in trouble. What they need to do is get somebody that is a defensive tactics or use of force expert up there that can be a police officer, but use of force and say, we do this or we don't do that. And that well, way they're... I, maybe the best thing would have been to just have him plead guilty yeah, and not well. have a trial at all and then hope that he can throw himself on the mercy of the court by saying... Uh, you know, I I I uh, I re regret what I did. I could have done this better. Blah 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 blah. And you know, cop a plea. All right. But Does I think that putting think I think putting him on trial, you just knew there was no way he was going to win this thing, did you? I mean, couldn't he? Uh, uh, I'm not a lawyer, but Robert, do you know anything about law? He could have copped a plea and just said, "I plead guilty." So and what? maybe what happens to the the gal that pulled the gun on? Dante, mm -hmm. you know, she pretty much, you know, turned herself in and she'll probably throw herself at the mercy of the court it, for it, making it, a mistake. It, I feel, I feel sorry for her. Uh, you know, I mean, I honestly, I, do, be, do. I honestly believe it was a mistake. It was a stupid mistake, but it was a mistake and it was a deadly <laughs> mistake. Brian, I agree. Brian, they already had a problem when the guy shot Oscar Grant at the BART station in Oakland, mm -hmm. and they made changes to that. They had countermeasures for that, and number one was to have them on the opposite sides. And I, I'm not the professional Alan is, but those are the countermeasures after that that happened. So they made it on the other side. It feels different. It's lighter. It's grabbing it from the other hand. I, I, what what else are they to do so they don't get them confused? So do we know that she had the taser on the gun You know, side? she thought she was using a taser because you can hear her yelling out, I have a taser, I have a taser. I mean, she said it three times. Right. It was a mistake, but it was a big mistake. It was a big oh, yeah. mistake. Well, I could be like this with a, and say, I have a knife and, and have a gun and shoot him. But yeah. I just don't see... In in, in 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 manufacturing, when there's a problem, you have to have countermeasures. You have to have pokey oaks to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And that's what they did after Oscar Grant got shot with the bark, because that's what they the excuse that they used. Yeah. The the, the reasoning, and, and and they made these, and, and here it goes again. This is crazy. I know it's nuts. You know what hasn't been discussed enough for my liking? What is in my little experience with the cops? If you pull the guy out. Mm -hmm of a car and you were going to handcuff him you didn't do it next to the running vehicle next to the fucking front door you the brought the, the guy car. to the trunk area so that or the front the shit mm -hmm. could possibly have gone down yeah and that's the other thing that they were going through all the stuff all the protocol that she broke and that was the number one thing <clears throat> they should have brought him to the back they should have had the car off right when you right when you get pulled over and there's a situation like that turn off the car they say right get out of the vehicle they bring you to the back how stupid could you be to leave a door open the idle car and then the guy there unbelievable yeah well yeah there's two sides it, to that it, no i mean it's a it, it's that's, a but it, alan that protocol that's what they're supposed to follow yeah. so protocol you can, some places, not all places. Oh, so. come on. It's not even protocol. It's just it's common sense. Okay, so I would, I, you know, so if you take somebody out of the car in order to detain them or search them, most of the time police do that at gunpoint. They get in their car, they get on the loudspeaker. Police know this is a felony stop. 
and you get the guy to a safe place. If you go up to the car and get the guy out of the car, you know, uh, if if the police car is parked in the right place, off off center, I mean, you can't see well, you know, just off center so the police car blocks if another car comes in and hits you. Or like Brian said, you take them to the front of the car, but it isn't always that cut and dry. And so, you know, it used to be Robert, probably when you were a dispatcher, that two police officers would stop a car and both of them would walk up to the car, one on each side. Now they found out the cops get killed that way a lot. So nowadays what they do is one of them stays back at the car or back in the back corner of the car outside, mm -hmm. you know, and the other one goes up and makes contact. So things change, and uh, you know the the Oscar Grant thing. I don't that that definitely he had his taser on the wrong side. He had it on the gun side, and before that they trained cops to put it on the non-gun side, just so that accident wouldn't happen. Well, what happened here? I don't know. I she don't was know holding she... a piece of paper in her left hand. Apparently, they showed that on one of the pieces of video, and so her left hand wasn't even free at the time she decided to draw the weapon. Yeah, but if you're gonna draw any weapon, you drop the paper, who gives well, a shit? Thank, thank you very much. That really? shouldn't in and of yeah. itself confuse you. That's Bri right. Brian? And sorry, I guess this shirt gets me vocal tonight, but you know, I listened <laughs> to you guys yesterday too, by the way, but yeah. And, and I think the problem is also is, why can't you just let them go away? Let them get away. I, I mean, the, these guys are shooting the guy in the drive-through when they shot him in the back and because he's running. My, my friend works SWAT in San Jose PD. He chases after, he's tall, slender, very athletic. He chases after the guy and tells him, I hear you breathing from here. I'm now I'm five feet behind you. I'm catching up to you. But these cops aren't letting just people go. The, the, they they have to shoot them. Well, I think there's, I think there's, I think there's a certain well, in her case, it wouldn't be macho, but there's a certain macho thing about, I'm a cop, how dare you leave? You know, how dare you try to run away? I think it's better to let the person run away and, you know, catch them on another day than to, uh, than to take a chance of killing a human being when all you're doing is stopping them for tags, you so, know? Okay, so <laughs> what, why, if you're stopping them for tags or some minor violation, you got to wonder why the guy's running or wants to run. Then wonder. Well, yeah. I don't kill him. Hey, yeah, so hey he could just be panicking, period, that he's afraid of, he, no, that yeah, especially in the case of, a, in, in, the, the in the case of a minority, he is he somebody run? who all his life has been put upon by the police, and every time they're stopped, they're, uh, it, it, there's a certain fear that happens. You know, I, I if, if a cop stopped me tomorrow because of what went on with me in, in Miami, I think I'd be scared too because I've okay. seen what can happen. You know, I was this I far. I was this far from getting killed by the Miami Police Department. It's a good thing they didn't, or I wouldn't have known you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but did he not I, uh, get? Uh, wasn't the warrant for a um, illegal possession of a weapon that they were going to cuff him for? That's you're talking about the kid, the, the twenty-year-old kid, right? Dante, yeah. Yes, it, that's correct. That's why they were cuffing him because so, he had a warrant for illegal possession of a weapon. Right. Yeah. And so then, they they were trying to get control of him right there outside the car. That's that's you know. So I think I would have if if you were stopping the car, and you knew that a weapon was in used, uh, uh, or or something that he may have it on him. Previously, I yeah. Take, I would have taken him out of the car at gunpoint. So right. that's why he was so nervous. That's why he was trying to bail. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, I'm not trying to make an excuse for the guy, but no, I, I, that's I, probably I, what the whole situation was. You're probably right, Kevin. Yeah. Still having an illegal firearm doesn't justify me. That doesn't make me dead. He might have had a firearm on him. And I, he might you have know, taken I, out a I, cop. I, I am. I'm always questioning you know, why, that, and, you know. and I'm probably wrong on this, and I'm not a cop, so I don't do this sort of thing. But why don't we shoot for the legs more often? Why do we always shoot for body mass, even when it's like, you know, for expired tags? You know? I mean, we it, we, it, in the case of George Floyd, we have a completely different situation there, which... Well, we keep saying, we keep saying for expired tags, but it wasn't at that point for expired right, tags. Right, right. That's right. 
At that that's point, right. it was for illegal possession of a weapon. That's right. So you got to. So it changed from expired tags to illegal possession. Now, of now, a weapon. now, was he was he charged with avoiding arrest on that, or had he yes. been arrested yes. and he didn't show up for court, or what was yeah. the story? Yeah, he had a warrant out. That's why they were going to take him in. He started okay. with the the tags. Then they got the warrant when they ran him, mm -hmm. and then he realized, oh shit, I'm going to get taken in, and he started to bail. And, and even after he got shot, did you notice that after he got shot, he took off anyway? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's adrenaline. Probably. He probably right. had a gun in the car with him. We don't know that. Well, we don't know that. Right. that. We don't know that. The was delivered to the wrong address. What's that? I kept, what I read was that they kept saying the warrant got delivered to the wrong address, so he didn't even know he had a warrant out on himself. That I don't know, Charlie. I don't know. I, I've I heard just... that a million times before, and it's possible. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I um, I just feel that why First cops thing, now, uh, with all that's been going on in the last three, four years, okay, why cops would take any kind of a chance on something like this? Why right. they would even, you know, uh, pull a gun when they could use pepper spray, they could use their tasers, they could use any number of other implements that they have. <laughs> even that ain't working right now. Doing it. That's right. What do you mean that isn't working right now? Well, look at the, well, look what happened in Virginia. Yeah. They um, you know, even that's not working. I mean, they can't, they can't do anything right now. Oh, right. like, for instance... When it comes to restraining but somebody, that was back in December. we have this guy, Eric Garner, here in New York. How do I remember that name? All of a sudden, I came out with it. Eric Garner. Guy was selling what? He was selling uh, loose cigarettes, cigarettes I think. Cigarettes. And the cops arrested him. They threw him to the ground. They, same exact thing. And he died as a result of it. That happened, what, four or five years ago? Yeah, Don't you yeah, think like that. that every police department in America would be talking to their force and saying, do not do this, you know? Obviously, this is, this is a real problem. Look at, look at the bad rap the Brooklyn police got. Yeah, it's know. not that cut. How did I remember Eric Garner? I, that was the first I can't breathe, right? That's yeah, the that's the first I can't breathe. breathe. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the, the thing about when you handcuff somebody, and I think I talked about this on a show, you don't want to put, once you get control of the person, a lot of times you'll put your knee in their back or in their shoulder blades in order to get them cuffed up. When you get them cuffed up, you don't want to leave them laying down because it pulls on the chest muscles just mm -hmm. by having your arms behind your back. And a lot of people laying face down can't breathe. Now, Chauvin, Chauvin has a bad record of this, doesn't he? You know, I don't know. I haven't heard that. He had had all kinds of complaints against him. Yeah, I haven't heard that. You know, okay. uh, who do we who do we lose Carl. here? We lost somebody. I'm, I can't remember who we lost. Charlie. 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 Oh, Charlie. oh okay. Well, we'll Dr. get him back. Doom he'll, is gone. He'll come back. <clears throat> he'll come back. Um, oh, now Polish Scott is having trouble. Are you, are you there, Scott? Okay, here comes Charlie. Okay. Uh, uh, Scott, are you there? Oh, there we go. Okay. And Charlie, are you there? There's Charlie. Okay. Uh, and I'm just saying that, you know, why after all of this, we, 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 policemen know, don't know not to do this sort of thing. You know, it's like every day this happens. I mean, the fact that this has happened 10 miles from the Chauvin trial. I mean, come on. You would have thought Minnesota would have just immediately grabbed all their cops, brought them in, and said, do not do anything that's going to put somebody's life in jeopardy. Is it? Uh, hmm? I don't know. I got a feel for them, too. I got a feel for the cops because well, they're out there standing in, the, in front of all the shit every day, too. You know, it, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah. They, they stand in front of the shit every day, too. You don't become a police officer to do nothing, Alex. Well, of course you don't become a police officer to do nothing. Some people become a police officer because they've got a Wyatt Earp syndrome, though. You're and, if you're in and, a situation, you'd be the first one to tell them to do something. Yeah, but the, you, know? you know what I'm talking about when I say the Wyatt Earp syndrome. It's yeah, a well-known... Yeah, the police business, they call it the John Wayne syndrome. Same thing. Yeah. 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 They're uh, out there, too. Yeah. I've, uh, often I wonder, I've often wondered, and this is just my thinking, when you're in the military, are you, you're trained to kill, Correct. 
Yep. Well, yeah. You know, but yeah. when you transfer to the police force, as many of them do, mm -hmm. is it difficult for them to discern between the two? We've had that discussion, Scott. Well, yeah. we've had that discussion yeah. about the fact that the, the military does nothing when somebody is mustered out of the military to turn off the switch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, you're nodding your head. Yes, you agree, Robert, right? Yeah, I do. It, shouldn't shouldn't the obvious first step, at least to help this situation, be a national da database in which police that have um, incidents such as this mm -hmm. are are monitored and, and kept track of so that they just don't hop to the city next door and you know, they, they're now lethal to, I mean, we register sex offenders, you know, we, we have other ways of registering people who've gone afoul of what have you. Mm -hmm. Why isn't it that that's, this is, such, why, why wouldn't this be an obvious first step? So that a Derek Chauvin, if he's had a record of this kind of behavior in other districts, finds it impossible to get a job somewhere else and that roots out a bad apple i don't know, you know it seems easy the other thing i was I'm thinking about gosh. the other day going down the road mm -hmm. thinking because yeah. i think a lot while i'm driving yeah is, a lot of times when a cop might uh, get fired from a police department he might you know go to some county and run for sheriff so if there was a database like robert was saying maybe they you know, you well, you get you get a background investigation, and it, it, mm -hmm. it, before you hire a cop, hopefully. Yeah. And if he came from another agency, you want to know why, and you talk to his people, the people that were there, and say, "What happened?" And if they say, "Oh, the guy had too many uh, complaints about uh, excessive force or something," you say, "Well, hands off! I don't want you to work for me." Chauvin had thirty. Yeah. Thirty. Yeah. You're you would think that some. after 30 complaints, he would be put on a desk and job. You're, you're, you're going to get some. Any cop that's doing his job is going to, you're going to get sued, too. So you know? Yeah, but you're not going to get 30 complaints for similar behavior, okay? I mean, let's face it. Okay, you're, you're a police chief, all right? And somebody comes to you and complains about Chauvin as being too aggressive in what he was doing. Aren't you going to investigate that? And if it looks like he was too aggressive, take him off a beat and put him uh, on a desk somewhere? Yeah, you know, that's what internal affairs is supposed to do. We yeah, well, that's what they're supposed to do, but where are they failing? I you don't know. know. I mean, yeah. we look, uh, uh, Charlie, join in when you want to, because uh, this is something I know is near and dear to your heart. Uh, I just don't understand why the police, after seeing all these problems over the last couple of years, both with the intrinsic racism that's involved, and not just against blacks, how about against Mexicans as well? Yeah. You know, Hispanics. Um, uh, with all that's been happening, why uh, we haven't gotten to a point where police departments say, hey, we've got to just change our whole attitude. We can't assume that because we pull someone over and they're black that they're going to pull out a gun and shoot us. You know? That we've got to change that, that, that mindset. Plus, I remind you, uh, uh, um, uh, and I think this is important, is that the police aren't exactly... Um, moving targets in that they've got every kind of thing available to them to prevent them from getting hurt. They've got bulletproof vests, you know, they've got two-way radios, they've got pepper spray, that whole belt is, is, a, is, is a full armory in and of itself with a gun and a taser. I mean, these guys have everything available to them. They are far more protected than I am. If if I'm if I'm suddenly in a problem with somebody and I call the cops, it's going to take them twenty minutes to get there. If I'm a cop who's in trouble, how long is it going to take them to get there? The last time. Yeah. So the, the 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 stuff on the on the on the uh, on the belt are all tools, but the most important tool out of all of them is your brain. And if the guy's brain is messed up, it's messed up. Get rid of the guy. He doesn't need to be a cop anymore. 
We cut Kevin off about 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Times. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. Ke- Kevin, Kevin, continue with what you were thinking. I'm sorry about that. Well, it's kind of ways back, but I, 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 what I was thinking, mm-hmm. and it probably goes back to why he got pulled over in the first place with a registration, a tag, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Steve knows this because there's divisions in the in the department that, you know, take care of vehicle issues and divisions that take care of criminal issues and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't, <clears throat> you know, they try and divide up the, you know, inner city departments to have a, you know, uh, a vehicle division to go around and pick off people with tags and, Mm-hmm. And, you know, like a meter maid, a little glorified mm-hmm. meter maid that would go after people with tags and check out their lights and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And then have the real cops go around and take care of cop stuff. You know, I know some states have actual, California doesn't have where you have vehicle inspections and things like that. Mm-hmm. But I know states like New Jersey and New York, you have to go get your vehicle inspected. And that's the same thing as the trucking industry, where you always have your truck inspected, and there's truck cops, there's commercial cops for trucks, and they go out and do that stuff, and then they have cops that go out and take care of cop stuff. You know, mm-hmm. you won't have a necessarily a, a commercial cop pulling over somebody for tags, and then start shooting them mm-hmm. because he's got a warrant. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe that's some a way to handle stuff in the city, is have... You know, well, I mean, isn't there isn't there also looking for tags is, and stuff. isn't there also an argument that there should be a certain part of the police department that aren't policemen, but that are psychologists and, and so on? And, right, and, and that's what I mean. It might be part of that division. Yeah. That who handle be. who handle like domestic the low end disputes? Stuff. Yeah, like I imagine I imagine as a but cop. But then you're also adding money, and people want to defund the police, yeah. and you're adding money to it, and everything else. I mean, you know. Yeah, as as I a cop, know. Alan. Uh, you, you, I imagine you were always bored to death when you had to go out on a domestic dispute, right? Uh, well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Because I felt those like are nasty. Be, had to be Aren't a psychologist. They? Yeah, yeah. Uh, those you know, can get real nasty, can't they? About, absolutely. So the FBI keeps statistics on cops killed the line of duty. Mm-hmm. And 40 years ago when I went to the academy, it's the same two things that cops are killed most often. Domestic disturbance fights and traffic stops wow and so in domestic disturbance about the time that i was a cop they said anytime you have a domestic disturbance call you always have two officers separate the husband and wife because Mm -hmm. although you're a mediator in there the husband may think you're uh, given the wife preference or vice Mm -hmm. versa go grab a knife or a gun or something inside the house so that, that alleviated some of it brian brian had his hand up yeah brian Oh, I was just going to say that they sort of, and like, like what Kevin was saying, that, you know, and Kevin knows this because of the area, but um, they do that in our area of the tow trucks, right? I see a cop drive right by somebody broken down on the side of the freeway <laughs> because the Campbell, Campbell towing will be there in about five minutes to go and see what's wrong with the guy's car. Yeah, and, they have a freeway so, service, yeah. Yeah, so they sort of do that already where they do have specialized, um, mm-hmm. but, 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 you know, they should do it for on broken down scale. vehicles, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but at least that, that kind of scale, they can continue to do something like that, just like you yeah. were saying. Oh, I have a, my delivery service. Oh, <laughs> oh hey, there, oh, there she is. Uh, what what, uh, what uh, did she bring you? Uh, chocolates for everybody. Oh, nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Avery. Nice. Very good. Thank uh, you. Guess, oh, so, <laughs> in this area, which Brian and Kevin touched on, in this area in California, Bay Area, San Francisco is now sending out um, psychologists or people that have some kind of degree in that in domestic disturbance, dealing with the homeless, uh, you, a lot of stuff that most of the time is not violent. And doesn't have the propensity right. to turn violent. I, I'm not sure I like it or not, but it, it'll be seen. Berkeley has gone one one better. <clears throat> Berkeley is now going to allow civilians to make traffic stops for minor infractions. Oh, Lord. And oh, well, okay. you take traffic stops where most cops are killed in line of duty in a traffic stop, and you're gonna end up with a lot of civilians that are have no way to really protect themselves. Right. 
are going to end up being well. Dead. That's another way Berkeley solves problems. So. Yeah, really. Well, <laughs> you know. so that, that's a California I, joke, by the way. As, but, as you know, a teach, as a teacher, I got involved in some domestic disputes when mm -hmm. you would discuss a child, and one of the first things I learned early on was if you try to mediate a domestic dispute, very quickly the couple unites and you become the enemy. You, you become the That's enemy. It's incredible how they suddenly get along fine, you yeah, know, absolutely. and you become the, the common enemy. That's the fucking teacher. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Absolutely. Well, so. anyway, uh, that, you know, uh, well, this will... We'll get some results on this. Uh, how fast do you think this trial is going to be over? I mean, when it goes to the jury, how long do you think it's going to take a jury? No idea. Really? Ten days. Now, I got a question here. This is something that, you know, and please don't take me wrong on this, but I'm watching MSNBC, which I have come to just absolutely abhor, okay, uh, because of the way they handle things. And I look at their coverage of the Chauvin case, and any time I turn it in and they tune it in and they've got like six people on the screen talking, at least four of them are black. I mean, uh, and, and one of them's a reporter, and the other one is, I don't know, maybe another reporter. What I don't, what I, is it my, is it wrong of me to think that MSNBC are racist? That they, in fact, are saying, hey, we're covering the Chauvin case. We better have nothing but black people on. You know, there are other, they're Asians, they're Hispanics, but no, they, they, they're doing preponderance of blacks. And I think, I think in their mind, in their mind, they're making a distinction between a guest who's white, Asian, Hispanic, or black. And they're going out and getting a preponderance of black. Am I wrong, Charlie? Does this make sense, what I'm saying? I that's why Charlie was here. What? I don't watch MSNBC. I don't know what they do. Yeah. Why don't you watch them? I just don't like that they were they were super on the side of the of the mainstream or the corporate Democrats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't stand the way they covered that, so I quit watching. Yeah. But I mean, am I am I wrong to think that that they're making because they they they're making a concerted effort to have blacks uh, discussing this trial and not a bunch of whites discussing this trial, that they're making a distinction in their mind between black and white? Yes, I think you're wrong. Oh, you think I'm wrong? Explain oh, why. I think you're right. I don't think it's close. In fact, mm -hmm. listen. If you're talking about Asian hate, I mean, you don't find someone who's Mexican to try yeah. to explain what they're going through. It's simple. It's just No, simple. no, no. And I agree with you on that, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the Chauvin trial itself. In fact, my question is, you got f six people on the screen at one time, right? Not one of them thinks Chauvin is you know, has a case... And, and he could be found innocent or here's why he is innocent or whatever. They don't go out and find the person, you know, th there's got to be people out there who honestly take another position on the Chauvin Not case. Not many. But if you're going to have a balance and a discussion, <clears throat> okay, aren't you going to seek out people of a differing opinion? Or are you going to balance? Every time I tune it in, oh, and the, the the prosecution did this, and they did that, and they were wonderful at it. Oh, the defense was terrible. I mean, that's all you ever get on this thing, and I just feel you get a skewed vision of the trial. Am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm full of shit. I think you're full of shit. Okay, thank I you really very do. much, Robert. <laughs> I, I just, I've been, you and I have been having this argument for weeks now. I still, I do watch MSNBC, and I don't see what you're seeing at all. I think what you're seeing is mm -hmm. sportscasters announcing the game as it's happening. And frankly, the defense has been weak. Oh, the defense, the defense has the been. The prosecution yeah. was strong. The def, and the they def, called yeah. it out. The defense has sucked in this trial, and and the reason why is I don't think they have much of a case. 
but and I, I, I that they're trying the best they can. Let me put it that way. I just don't understand, as I said earlier, why he just didn't cop a plea. That he would have been better off probably copping a plea than to what? Uh, huh? Copping a plea to what? Um, what crime? Believe me, that can be negotiated with with the prosecutors. Temporary sure. insanity. Uh, uh, no, oh, I'm, that's not going to fly. Manslaughter is one of them. I mean, you right. know, that's a possibility. Uh, you know, I mean, what are they charging him with? Is it homicide they're charging him with? Murder. Murder. Yeah. Second degree murder. Second degree murder. He probably could have copped a plea to to uh, to uh, what, what we use manslaughter. Do you think the prosecutor who's hired by the municipality is going to survive? allowing him to cop a plea under these circumstances? I well, uh, the question is, yeah. do we make a decision on trials based upon what we feel is going to be the perceived public reaction to it? Or do we do right. this we as dispassionately as possible? We shouldn't, but we do. Yeah. Let's not let's not forget that prosecutors or attorneys general mm -hmm. are hired by municipalities, and in many cases, they're <laughs> elected officials. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, they're hired or elected based on their record of convictions. That's already disturbing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That in effect, you're rewarded by virtue of how many people out of those are indicted get actually locked up yeah. but that's the reality yeah because because i mean i just um i just think that uh, it, it it's very difficult for anybody involved in this whether it's a juror or whether it's a prosecutor or whatever to to render any other kind of verdict but what the one that the public is crying out for and i don't think we should listen to the crowd I don't think that because the public wants him necessarily found guilty, that that's a good reason to find him guilty. He should be found guilty because on the preponderance of the evidence, he did a bad thing and he is guilty. Okay, okay? but by the same token, if he is found guilty, that doesn't necessarily mean that it was because yeah. the public called him. Yes. But what I'm saying is, and folks, don't get the idea, you know, if, if you just ask me over here in the corner, what do I think about Chauvin? I'd say he's the biggest asshole, cocksucker, motherfucker, horrible human being on the planet because of the way he handled that situation. But it's not my place to make that judgment. It is the a, a jury's job dispassionately to come up with a verdict. And it should not, they should not be taking into consideration what the American public wants. Uh, yes, uh, Alan. So 10 years ago, most of this wouldn't be happening mm -hmm. uh, because people didn't have cameras. The cameras told the story. Yeah. And so that was one thing. And 10 years ago, most juries did not convict police officers for anything. And I think that's wrong. Yeah. Yes. Record. Absolutely. Just for the record, but uh, but it, it, it it's un, it, it is the fact. And until recently, maybe the past five years, I don't know what, mm -hmm. cops are now being held when they're doing things wrong, especially when it's shown on videotape. Look at the Rodney King thing. Guy had a camcorder. The cops yeah. were totally in the wrong. Right. And they all got fired, and some of them went to prison. But yeah. that's Dust scary, right? I mean then how many such incidents took place that we as a society didn't have any knowledge of? Absolutely. Right? I, I agree with you. Oh, how many are still going? Uh, you know, I mean, the fact is because there are cameras now, it, it becomes suddenly quite onerous and more people get caught doing this. But yeah, it's still, sure. I mean, how many, for years, how many people were killed under these same circumstances uh, that we bet. never even heard about? You yeah. bet. You know, it's all terrible. Okay, mind you, it's all terrible. I'm just saying that if you're going to put somebody on trial, he should be put on trial in the fairest of all circumstances, no matter what you think. Okay, we're all judging Chauvin or whatever his name is. Yeah, I mean, based uh, on based on what we're seeing in the news. 
And what you're seeing in the trial, you you know, you're not seeing right. everything either. Yes, Brian. I, I don't say. Alex, what did guilty. you want to happen? Because you know, from day one, everybody wanted him guilty, right? Right. Yeah, right. but just it's just. But be, how, how did you expect the jury not to be already know what the general public was? Well, that's want? that's the problem. You know, how right. do you find it as passionate jury? And I don't think that's possible. Right. You you have a choice. You can maybe you can find somebody who paid no attention to the news and didn't know this thing went on. And in that case, do you want somebody that dumb on a jury? You don't want him. (laughs) Yeah. But on the other hand, the only people you really want on that jury is people who are aware of what's going on, but then they're aware of it. So, you know, I mean, anybody who looked at that uh, videotape of a videotape, the video, I'm an old-fashioned person and I say videotape. Anybody who looked at that video, was a witness to the crime. Yes. Yeah. Everybody, you, me, anybody, a juror, and I, I bet you, you can't find a single juror on that, on that jury, that didn't see that video. Well, they've seen it now. That's well, for damn seen sure. Them all, but several we, times. We were all witnesses to the, uh, to the crime. Uh, it's, it's very difficult in this day and age to even get a fair trial for anybody. You know, and everybody has the right to be put on trial. Chauvin, as much as, no matter what you think of him, and we can think the worst, as I personally do, um, uh, is, is, is supposed to be guaranteed a fair and impartial trial by his peers. I Here. wanted to bring something up earlier. What was that? Oh, I was going to start to raise my hand up. My brain went to work before my hand. Mm-hmm. Um, you were talking to Stephen Kravitz about his addiction. Yeah. The heroin. Mm-hmm. Heroin is coming back big time. Methamphetamine is going down, but heroin is coming back. A lot of people are switching. Well, I don't know if they're switching, but a lot of, lot more people now than... Well, did you hear me tonight with Steve Kravitz? Yeah, I listened in to discussing it. bringing that up. Yeah. Um, good, because heroin isn't as bad as methamphetamine. <laughs> okay? I That's agree. for starters. All right? Yeah. So, um, so if it goes up, I would rather see it go up than methamphetamines. Sure. So, so let's review here. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm likely to get shot by a cop. Yeah. I'm likely to get syphilis, and I'm probably going to end up on heroin. Is that what I get out of this so far? Yeah, pretty much. Sure. Pretty, pretty soon. Much. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm good now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, In Ohio, heroin's been a big issue for more than five years. I mean, yeah. it's a huge really? issue in Ohio. Yeah. 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 But part of my argument, it's a huge issue because it affects white um, rural people who vote Republican. Yeah. That's right. why it becomes an issue. You know, if we made that, if we made heroin legal, we would probably prevent a lot of deaths from it. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's my thinking. Uh, I think, where is it? Is it Oregon or, or Washington that legalized everything? They just said, Oregon. it's not a crime anymore. It's a medical problem. And that's exactly what these drugs should be. The war on drugs has failed. In the case of heroin, if they could go out and get heroin from the state, as an example, not methadone, that's terrible, but uh, heroin, Uh, the reason people die from heroin is they don't know how heavy the dose is they're getting. If it were regulated, then they'd know. And or probably it's, it's, we would it. see less deaths from it. You can, you can get regulated heroin. They're called narcotic pills. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the, trouble is, the trouble is is your body gets used to a certain level, yeah. and you need more and more and more to get the high. But you have to give out three needles along with that because the needle issue is a huge deal. With sharing. Needles, for you, needles, oh. HIV transmission stuff, big deal. Needles yeah, and heroin is a big deal, mm-hmm. but but the heroin addicts are moving to fentanyl, and you don't need a needle. Oh no, that that's terrible. Why why is heroin making a comeback? Any theories? I don't know. Uh, usually, I don't. You know, it I don't could know. be it could be simply availability. Yeah. Availability, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Charlie. What were you saying? But don't they use that for a substitute for for the? Uh, uh, what, what, hydro, what is it? The co- what is that? The opioid or whatever? The, the yeah. oxycontin. Oxycontin. That's what I was saying. Like people get, you know, to get a prescription for oxycontin, and then they can't, 
then they cut them off because they only do that for so long and so yeah. then they go out and get a heroin for as a substitute for it that's exactly, exactly why it happens a lot yeah 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 so maybe that's the reason why it's but drugs but drugs in america weren't a problem until mary prep school in the suburbs started fooling mm -hmm. with them right you oh know, right! As long as, as long years ago, as long as they were in the black communities, yeah, they didn't care. It was, wasn't a problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, there's a lot of truth to that, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, you know, the biggest heroin dealer in the whole country is the uh, the Sackler family, and they have like, uh, you know, museums named after them in fucking colleges. Well, so they did some good. <laughs> <laughs> the Sacklers, in case that, people know, don't know. Been, the Sacklers own uh, Purdue. Yeah, Purdue. That, Do they still own it? I heard maybe they were just getting rid of I, it. I, well, the, it, the, the company's bankrupted, but they took all the money out of the company and put it in their own name and bankrupted the company. But they're still rich, you know. They're richer than Yeah, shit. but the Sacklers were also the largest contributors to museums around yeah. not only the yeah. United States but the world. They wow. have their own uh, wing at the Metropolitan uh they've got they've got hospitals named after them there but see that's that's the the modern day villains well by the way they, by the way they've taken those names off a lot of those hospitals yeah, yeah. and a lot of those uh, uh wings uh although there is one sackler who's okay he was not part of the other sacklers you know yeah there was three brothers um I just started reading the book that just came out. I yeah. just, just started. See, but, uh, there was one brother, Hacky Sackler. Did you? <laughs> you... <laughs> wow, that's a high school. Oh, and, 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 and Nut Sackler. That was another one. <laughs> that's a painful issue. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, by the way, we haven't heard from Jeff tonight. Jeff hasn't said a word. Have you? Yeah, I'm telling you. Huh? I, I am like overloaded with. with uh, all of these uh, people killing each other every day. That's why I tried to change the subject to the, the heroin. Yeah. I heard something cool. Need a break. Today. Yeah. Today I was, I, I heard that you, re, you guys remember when Dan Quayle was the vice president and he went after the character Murphy Brown because yeah. she was. She had a child out of wedlock, and Dan yeah. Quayle was trying to sell the Republican line of shit about families, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Views, this and that, and the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. The very month that Dan Quayle came out with that argument with Murphy Brown, guess who was on the cover of Playboy that month? Donald J. Trump. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Really? I would not have wanted to open the magazine and see him in the nude. No, I, I suppose he did. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, gross. Mind you, when Quayle said that, Newt Gingrich was screwing a woman while his wife was in bed dying of cancer. Dying of cancer. I remember that. You know, wait a minute. She, wait a minute. In, 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 on, his, on his behalf, she didn't die of cancer. I think she lived. Oh, okay. She had cancer. She was in the hospital with it. He came to the hospital and said, I want a divorce. I want a divorce. Yeah. Yeah. Classy, classy guy. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. What a well, I have one so thing. Bad Wait a minute. Uh, Jeff, what? I have one thing that I'd like to kind of say is I've been very happy with our president. Mm -hmm. The guy has shown up to be a good communicator. Mm -hmm. He tells you what he's what the history was. He tells you about what he's going to do now mm -hmm. and, and what the results might be. Yeah, and you want to know what one of the headlines is here? In uh, on, uh, I'm just looking at Drudge. One of the headlines is uh, Biden carrying out some of Trump's biggest campaign promises. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you see... Tucker Carlson actually came out and said all vaccines cause disease. The government knows this and they won't tell you. This yeah. is what we have to put up with in America. Uh, uh, Can I add something here? Yeah. In today's news, Maxine Waters slaps Jim Jordan for questioning Fauci in the COVID did you, hearing. Did you see that? Fauci I took him. That was yeah. awesome. 
I, I, what oh, an up. asshole that guy is. Jim Jordan. Yeah. Jim Jordan goes. Right. Uh, and, uh, what was his What was his take on things? That uh, why don't you tell? He's tell. like, wait, wait, how, how, how low? You know, when, when taking can away you, rights? What's the number? Yeah, you're taking oh, away rights. Rights and rights. Liberties and rights. Right. right. And, and 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 Fauci finally just said, Senator. Five hundred and fifty thousand people are dead from this disease. You've got to do something about it. And he rattled on, and they, they told him his time was up, and he went on anyhow. And Maxine Waters said, "Shut up." Yeah, <laughs> Thumbs up Shut your mouth. I mean, is, is are the Republicans trying to see who is the most despicable person they can yeah. elect to public office? Is they that got a their... lot of people? Huh? They got a lot of people to pick from. Yeah. Is Ted, is Ted Cruz out of the bushes on the border yet? I, I, I lost track of him. <laughs> I, I have no idea what's happening with him lately. But Did you see, there's a picture of him and Fidel Castro. Yeah. Yeah. Each other. He has the he has the hat on and everything. He looks just like him with the beard. <laughs> he looks like a fat fucking fur ball with that beard. <laughs> you know. I mean, did somebody say, "Hey, this is a good idea. This is a good look for you." Except this is for a, a good look for you. Probably has a higher IQ. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, boy. I mean, I just don't understand what it is with the Republicans and why they feel like a guy like Jim Jordan. How does he spell it? It's J Y M or something. G G Y M. That's a joke. G Y M because he was a wrestling coach. Yes. Turned his according to reports, he turned his head. While well, some kids were getting diddled by the, the head coach or oh, something. Or about some uh, perfect Republican. I yeah, just, well, don't you, don't please. You, it, Family values. Yeah, really. I just don't understand the Republicans. What are they thinking? I mean, come on, where's the good Republican now? There isn't even a good Republican out there, is there? They don't care. Huh? Yeah, there's a couple no, good they ones. don't. So yeah, name uh, one. Who, who, who? Adam, Adam, San Sandler. Adam Sandler, he's a comedian. Who else? Yeah. Yeah, really. Oh, you're talking about Come on, John, give us somebody. Zinger or something like that. Boy, you can't even. You don't even know who he is. You know. He's going to tell you that uh, Richard Nixon's dead in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Adam Sanginger or something like that. Uh, it's, uh, uh, no, I don't. I don't know who you're talking about. No, neither do I. Yeah. He's the one Republican in the House that voted for the. Uh, yeah, he, he voted to impeach Trump. Trump, oh, yeah. Okay, so there's one. Okay, and will he get reelected? Probably yeah, no, not. Soon to be <laughs> former Republican. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Former. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Hey, listen, it's been good tonight, and thank God I got on because then yeah, we yeah. could sit here and have a good discussion. Yeah. You know. Howard says hello to everybody. By the way, who? Howard. Howard's Dennis. Oh, I saw him in oh, Maui. Oh, yeah. well, why hasn't he called? It's it's like five o'clock there, you know. It's too yeah. I think timing is bad. Cocktail hour. They're having yeah, monetized exactly. and margaritas. Yeah, right. Anyway, yeah. hey, listen. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Scott, for being here again tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Alan, always good. Uh, Trucker Steve and Rocky, where are you tonight? He's right there what? in his Trucker uh, Steve dance. Hornage, uh, Indiana. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, uh, uh, Kevin. Thank you, uh, John. Uh, thank you, Brian. And thank you to Charlie Wallace. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave, wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me unceremoniously hang up on them. Jack Bishop is next, right after us with the intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I will be back here again tomorrow night, okay, at uh, 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, wear a mask out there. Still keep wearing that mask. Things are getting better, but wear a mask and get a shot and uh, stay safe, everybody. Okay? Good night.